Okay, welcome to AP Biology. This is our first podcast, and um, the first thing I want to do is go through the units that we'll be covering in AP Biology. Um, there are nine units um, total. Um, unit zero, which is we're gonna, what we're going to start off with, is just an introduction to what biology is, properties of life, that kind of thing, how to design an experiment correctly using the appropriate terms, and then we're going to do some introductory statistics. So if you had AP stats or regular stats, you are good to go for that portion of this class. Um, unit one is on chemistry, biochemistry, so that's your basic chemistry, which is why you should have chemistry if you're a junior concurrently with this class. Um, properties of water and then the four macromolecules in depth, way more in depth than you did in regular bio. Um, unit two is on cells. Um, that's, that unit is usually pretty easy compared to um, other units. Um, we do get into the cell membrane in that unit, and um, there's some math um, calculating water potential. Um, unit three is probably one of the harder units. It is on cell energy, and so we cover enzyme cellular respiration photosynthesis. It's very chemistry-oriented, um, and it's a very difficult unit right there for unit three. Unit four is on how cells communicate with each other and feedback mechanisms and mitosis, the cell cycle. All right, unit five is our genetics, um, the different types of genetic problems and genetic variation. Unit six is on DNA, transcription, translation, also on gene regulation. So we get into what an operon is, a lot of detail about mutations, and we get into genetic engineering. Unit seven is on natural selection with Darwin. There is a math-based um, portion to that, which is called Hardy-Weinberg. We get into the evidence, the common ancestry, and phylogenetic trees. And then lastly, at the end of the year, we will get into the ecology section. All right, a little bit more about AP Bio. Um, you are taking AP Bio because you are trying to get college credit. AP Biology is equivalent to taking two semester classes at a college, an introductory biology class. Um, if you pass the AP Biology exam with a three, four, or five, five is the highest, you um, should receive credit for your college courses. Some universities do not accept AP Biology, so you would want to look at that. Um, prior to making a decision whether you're going to take the exam or not. Um, our AP biology test is usually the second Monday in May. So out of the two weeks of AP exams, ours is usually the second Monday. Um, and they score you based on a scale of one to five, with five being the best score. Um, three is considered passing for most colleges, but some colleges like Oakland require a four. There's no penalty for incorrect or unanswered questions. For AP Bio, there's two sections. Each is worth 50% of your overall test score. Section one is an hour and a half, and you just take 60 multiple choice questions, A through D, four choices. And section two is also an hour and a half, where you're going to have two longer free response questions and four shorter free response questions. Um, I will post this onto um, our Google Classroom, and you can click on that if you would like to know more about the AP Biology exam breakdown. All right, the next section I want to go through are the big ideas of AP Biology, and you will be watching videos on the science practices of biology. There are four big ideas, and there is a link there, um, a nine-minute video if you would like to learn more. Big idea one is about evolution and how that drives the diversity in, of life. Big idea two is about energy, how molecular building blocks are needed to grow and to reproduce and maintain homeostasis. Big idea three is about information, so that's your DNA, how it gets retrieved, transmitted in response to different information molecules in the body. Um, and then big idea four is how biological systems interact. Um, it is important to know how to study and how to do well for this course. There is a 10 minute um, link here to watch a video um, on how to be successful in AP Biology. So please watch that. And here we go, we're going to start off with unit zero, the principles of life, introduction, experimental design, CER, and then our statistics. So in unit zero, there are four parts, um, an overview of AP Bio, properties of life, which we will have a quiz on. You need to know what a CER is, which we'll be using and testing on all year long. And then also stats and introduction of those, which we'll be using in our labs and tested on all year long. So you should be taking your notes, um, notes into this, into your notebook. So first thing is 1.1, title that up at the top of your page. You should know what biology is. Anything that ends in an OGY is a study of something. So bio means life. So biology is the scientific study of living things or organisms. 
Um, we know that living things are all descended from a single cell ancestor. And all these organisms, all organisms in life, come from three domains. So when you think of a domain, and you, you might think of like kingdoms, phylum, class order, family, genus, species, like the taxonomic scheme of organisms. Even above a kingdom, there's a classification, and it's called a domain. There, so all organisms of life belong to three domains. They are either in archaea, which is special bacteria, bacteria, which is normal everyday bacteria that you think of, and then where we belong, and a lot of other organisms belong, is the, do the domain eukarya, which are where all the eukaryotes belong to. All of these organisms have certain characteristics that they share together, and so all those all those ideas lead to the conclusion that all life has a common ancestor. So I want you to take a couple minutes, I'm not gonna start the timer, but I want you to think of these, look at these three pictures, and evaluate whether they exhibit characteristics of life. So back in regular biology, you should have learned the properties of life, seven to 10 of them. And so what, do, what does the bottom pictures have, what properties do they have um, to determine whether they are a living thing or not? So obviously the flower and the frog were living things and that diamond in the middle was not. The things that um, you need to know that all organisms share, these are the properties of life right here. Um, all living things have DNA, okay? Um, their DNA can be in a nucleus, it doesn't have to be in a nucleus, but all living things have DNA. Because that DNA is the central dogma, it uh, produces the protein through transcription and translation. So all living things, number one, has DNA. All living things are composed of cells. Now that's a little misleading, it doesn't have to be multicellular. A living thing can just have one cell and still be considered a living thing. All living things, number three, can process energy. They have a metabolism. They go through cellular respiration or photosynthesis. They do energy chemical reactions in their body to produce this energy that they need for life. Number four, uh, the fourth property of um, life is homeostasis. We can maintain internal conditions. Different organisms do that in different ways. Number five, response to stimuli. That stimuli can be internally in into their body or external. You respond to that. Um, number six, um, living things can replicate genetic information while reproducing. So they copy their DNA, and that DNA goes you know, further down into the next generation. Um, number seven, all living things can grow and develop. We will grow into adults, and then we will develop and special. The cells will develop and specialize into specialized cells. Um, number eight, all living things can evolve. And then you might have learned in regular bio that you could also count movement. All living things can move and die. Eventually, all living things will die. Couple terms from those properties of life um, you, that you should know is metabolism and homeostasis. Make sure you understand that metabolism is some of all those chemical reactions that are occurring in an organism, whether it's cellular respiration, digestion, photosynthesis, that all those um, energy obtaining processes is called metabolism. Um, the other term is homeostasis, and that's maintaining a constant internal environment, like for us, endotherms, we maintain 98.6 degrees. If you would like to learn more about the properties of life and descriptions of that, there are two videos here available for you. Um, we usually, um, in this class, will watch a lot of Bozeman. Um, he teaches AP Biology in Washington State, I believe. Oh, and then there's always the cartoon version of these concepts, and that's the amoeba sisters. So there's a 10-minute video or an 8-minute video. Please watch one of them. We will do this SAMI um, exercise in class. Um, one thing that we talked about is in properties of life is that all living things have cells, and it kind of goes with the idea that all life is organized. Um, organization in life is obviously apparent when you look at the hierarchy of levels and how everything gets goes from small to large. So you can start with like the atom, and then you get into molecules, and then you get into macromolecules, and then you get to the cells, the organelles. There's a hierarchy of this, and it starts from the atom, and it works all the way to the biosphere. Um, that's called organization. Um, another concept that kind of goes with the properties of life is that cells use energy, this is that metabolism concept, to synthesize or make complex molecules by assembling atoms into new highly organized configurations. Organization is essential for cells to function in a multicellular organism. 
Here is your hierarchy. You would need to know this in order. So there are 13 of them. So number one would be an atom. Number two would be a molecule, or they wrote small molecule. Um, number three would be a macromolecule. Number four isn't on this diagram, but that would be organelle. Organelles make up five cells. Cells make up tissues, once they specialize. Um, tissues make up organs. Organs make up organ systems. And then organ systems make up organisms. A bunch of organisms that live together in the same area is called a population. Populations make up communities. Communities make up ecosystems, and ecosystems make up the biosphere. So you should have 13 total levels. There is an art, uh, activity down here you can click on to do an activity um, in, about this hierarchy. Here is a list to check make sure that you got them all of all 13 levels from smallest to largest. You would need to know those. All right, our next section is the scientific method or the experimental process. Um, I don't know what background you had from biology or actually any other science class. You do labs, you do experiments. And so all experiments that are run need to be controlled experiments. A controlled experiment is going to manipulate only one thing in the experiment. All other conditions need to stay the same or constant. Um, what, what you are manipulating, that factor that you are manipulating, is called a variable. And that's what you're basically testing to see if that's what's causing this to happen. Um, so a method is devised, experiment is devised, to manipulate only that one variable in your experimental group and you're going to compare it to the unmanipulated control group. Um, when you're running an experiment, you will have two variables then, an independent variable or a dependent variable. The independent variable is the variable that's being manipulated. Um, when I teach regular bio, I also call that the manipulative variable. And then your dependent variable is your response variable or responding variable. That is the ver what you're going to be looking for in the experiment, like what you're going to take your data on to get qua quantitative data. A control is the group in the experiment that you're using to compare. And so in biology, there are actually two types of controls. There's a positive control and a negative control. Um, a positive control is the group that's expected to produce results, and the negative control is a group that is not expected to produce results. Sometimes AP Biology questions will ask you to design an experiment. When you are designing an experiment, you want to make sure that you mention and you discuss that you have one variable that you are manipulating and that all other um, factors or variables are held constant. You have a clear independent variable and a clear dependent variable, and you would state what those are. You would make sure that your data and you would explain and how you are going to collect that data and that the data is going to be quantified, which means you're going to have numbers and units. So if you're going to measure in temperature, you would say, well, what, what are you measuring it in? You're measuring in Calvin, Celsius, Fahrenheit. You want to be specific when you write out these um, essay questions. And you also want to always mention that your experiment can definitely be repeatable and that you would repeat the experiment to verify your results. When you are running an experiment, you are going to have a hypothesis. Um, we're going to do more about hypotheses later, but there are two types of hypotheses in AP Biology. Um, you probably learned what one of them, or both of them actually, in stats if you've had stats before. Um, the experimental hypothesis is your normal hypothesis that you probably think of. It is also called the alternative hypothesis. Um, and it's basically testing how does the independent variable affecting my dependent variable. Um, we abbreviate the experimental hypothesis HA. A stands for alternative hypothesis. And so your experiment will either reject the hypothesis or support the hypothesis. For example, if I study for a long time, then I will get a higher grade. That is a testable experimental hypothesis. I'm looking at does my independent variable which is the amount of time that I'm going to study, affect the grade, which is my dependent variable. Also, because we are doing stats in a lot of our labs and experiments, um, we're going to have a null hypothesis. A null hypothesis is going to test whether there's a difference between the control and the experimental treatment. Like, did, is the experiment even valid? And we're going to test that by writing a null hypothesis. 
So a null hypothesis is also going to see is if there is a difference, is it large enough to be due more than just some type of random chance, like it's just randomly happened or not? There is, so basically a null hypothesis is saying that there's no difference between your independent variable and your dependent variable. All right, make sure you're writing all this down in your notebook, um, by the way. Null hypothesis is abbreviated HO instead of HA for your experimental hypothesis. So a null hypothesis would say the length of time I study for the exam will have no effect on the grade I will receive. And so then you're going to test that null hypothesis by statistics. And so we will get into statistics in a little bit. Statistical tests will determine whether you reject or fail to reject your null hypothesis. Um, the methods of statistics will help scientists determine if differences between the groups are significant, and that's what we're looking for. Statistical tests will, are going to start with that null hypothesis, which we abbreviate HO, that no difference exists between those two variables. Um, these methods will eliminate the possibility that results are due to random variation. We will get a lot of practice on this. So just remember when you're writing out your hypotheses, hypotheses must be testable and they have to have the potential to, being, to be rejected. Science depends on evidence, and you have to have evidence and that to reject or um, fail to reject a hypothesis. This evidence comes from repeatable and quantifiable data and observations. So here is a practice multiple choice question. Which of the following terms is incorrectly matched with the definition? A, data is quantified observations. B, controlled experiment is an experiment that manipulates one or more of the factors under investigation. C, no hypothesis is a prediction about what will happen to a control group. D, comparative experiment is an experiment that compares unmanipulated data from different sources. Or E, variable is the critical factor that has an effect on the phenomenon being investigated. The answer was C, that is incorrect. A null hypothesis is a statistical term that differs from a prediction.